Day. Welcome to another episode of Virtual Sunday School. I really miss you guys. I wish we were face to face. I wish I could give all you moms a hug, but this is all we get and we get what we get and we don't throw a fit, right? Right. So hey, boys and girls, before we get started with our lesson, I have two things for you to do. Two things. Are you ready? First one, I want you to go and tell your mom that you love her, but before you do that, I want you to ask her, Mom, how would you like me to show you how much I love you? What can I do to show you that I love you? Okay, can you do that? All right, so right now, run, go tell your mom you love her and ask her how you can show her that you love her. Ready, go. Well, I'm so glad you're here. Our moms love us so much. They take such good care of us. They feed us, they rock us, they love us, they play with us, they make sure that we're healthy. They, we are so fortunate to have moms who love us. And I am so fortunate for all the moms out there. And you know, moms teach us a lot of things. And they teach us how to be kind and love one another and to share. And you know where they learn that? They learn it from the Bible. Last week, do you remember we learned about a man whose legs were broken, they didn't work, and Jesus healed them. And many people came to know Jesus. And when they came to know Jesus, their life was changed. Isn't that exciting? So exciting. You know, um, my life was changed not too long ago. I was going to go on a trip to Thailand with a group of people from church. And I didn't think I'd be able to afford it. And a lot of us wanted to go and we didn't think we'd be able to afford it. And so we prayed and we thought, what can we do? And we thought, we'll have a garage sale. And do you know that we told the people of the church and our fans and family that we were gonna have a garage sale and if they wanted to give us some things they didn't need anymore, that we would sell them and use that for our trip. So many people brought so many things. We had so much to sell. And then some people came and even bought more things. And then some people just gave money to help us. And we were able to go on a mission trip to Thailand. And it was a really amazing trip. Has anyone ever given you something that you really needed? You know, today we're gonna to talk about how God meets our needs and how we can meet the needs of others and how we can share things. And one thing I like to share and to do is play with Play-Doh. So let's go over to our craft table and make some Play-Doh that we can share. All right, so let's make some Play-Doh. Are you ready? Now this is not your ordinary Play-Doh. Instead of the typical recipe that you have to cook over the stove, you don't have to cook this. This is cornstarch. You can use flour, but it'll feel different. So I'm taking a half a cup of cornstarch because I just want to make a little bit but if you want to make a lot that you can divide up and share, do two cups of cornstarch or flour and one cup of the other magical ingredient, okay? So two to one, two cups, one cup. But I'm using a half a cup cornstarch and this yummy, mmm, it doesn't taste good, but it smells good. It's hair conditioner. Isn't that fun? So we blop that hair conditioner in there. And then you use your fingers and you just mush it around until it's all dissolved and it's or all mixed, not dissolved, all mixed together. Oh, it feels so soft. It feels so good. Oh, you just have to, oh and you just mush it between your fingers. gets a little goopy you can just add a little more cornstarch or if it gets too crumbly and dry you can add a little more conditioner you just keep mixing It's a heart. Oops. <laughs> Look like a heart. Ta-da! <laughs> it's 
So this is how the one with conditioner turned out. Don't give up. You gotta keep working it, and if it gets too sticky, add more um, cornstarch, or if it gets too crumbly, add a little more conditioner. But now we're gonna try to make the one with baby lotion. So these smell so nice. And after we're all done making it, I'm gonna add some glitter and some food coloring so you can make it very special. So you can do this and make it for a friend. So I'm gonna start with some more cornstarch. We'll pour that in. And then I uh, measured up some baby lotion. So yeah, so remember it's two cups of cornstarch and one cup of either baby lotion or conditioner. You just mix and mix so you don't give up. You keep working it. Make sure when you get started to wash your hands. You always start with clean hands, even when you're making Play-Doh. Okay, so you never want to give up. You have to keep adding and working. It's like a science experiment. Um, I decided I liked one with conditioner better. I didn't think I would, but I did. And so now, to make it fun and sparkly, we're going to add some food coloring. And I think one of my friends really likes blue. So I'm going to put a drop of blue in this one. Oh, just a drop. And one of my neighbors loves pink. So I have a drop of pink. Maybe two. And also, glitter to make it sparkly. So we'll put blue glitter in the blue one. And we'll put pink or purple. What color would you call that? Pink or purple? You decide. If I could figure out how to open it. Ooh, now it's all over the table. Whoa. So I'm going to start with the pink. Are you ready? Here we go. Never give up. And we have a blue blob of Play-Doh and a pink blob of Play-Doh. Now, I prefer the conditioner over the baby lotion, but you make it and you decide what you like better and you decide what color your neighbor would like and who you're gonna share it with. Wouldn't that be a nice thing to give a friend who's stuck at home and can't go outside to play some homemade, sweet smelling, weird textured, super soft Play-Doh. All right, well now we're gonna hear about the guy in the Bible who learned to be generous and share because of how Jesus changed his life. Last week, remember, we talked about how people came to know Jesus and put their trust in Jesus because they saw the lame man get healed? Well, after that, God's family kept growing and growing and growing. And it was so special. It was as if um, everything that everyone had belonged to everyone else. Nobody thought of their possessions as their own. The Bible says it was like one big family. You know, when you sit down to a meal with your family, everybody gets a little bit and everybody has some and everybody helps to clean up. Well, I think that must have been what it was like. And God really um, gave them such a special love for each other and they wanted to love each other and they trusted that Jesus would meet all of their needs so they weren't hoarding things. So if someone was hungry 
and someone had more, they would share. Like this orange. My friend had an orange tree and she gave me this orange. She shared it with me because she had extra. And then um, one day, maybe someone needed an avocado for Cinco de Mayo. Well, my friend Josh gave me an avocado. Isn't that great? Well, maybe, maybe someone broke their dishes and they didn't have dishes. Well, maybe someone had extra and they were able to give them a beautiful bowl to serve their food or to eat their food. That was just what it was like. If you had some and other people didn't have any, you would just automatically share because it was like a family. I just think that's amazing. Only Jesus can change our hearts to make us want to share. Well, there was a man, and his name was actually Joseph. But we know him as Barnabas. And Barnabas was his nickname because he was so encouraging. That nickname means son of encouragement. Can you imagine? I bet he used a lot of nice words. Do you know what encouraging words would be? Like, thank you for sharing that lovely orange with me or avocado with me. That would be encouraging to use your manners or to say, wow, mom, I loved that dinner. You did a really good job cooking dinner. Thank you for making dinner. Those are encouraging words. You can be an encourager just like Barnabas. Well, Barnabas had some land and he realized, I don't need all that extra land. I'm not farming it. I'm not living on it. I don't need it. I'm gonna sell that land. So Barnabas sold the land and then he went to the other apostles and he gave them the money. And he said, you know, here's this money from this land that I sold, I didn't need it. And so maybe some other people might need some money. You know, during this time when we have been shut down, I needed some money and some parents at the school I work gave extra money and I got some extra money. Isn't that great? They shared. And you know, during this time, people need things. Some people can't find toilet paper at the store. Maybe your family has toilet paper and they can share. Well, um, I didn't have any antibacterial spray, and then my daughter gave me some, so now I have some antibacterial spray in my car. Isn't that great? So there's different things we can do to share. I didn't have a mask, and my friend that I walk with bought masks, so she gave me two, one for me and one for Mr. Jamie, so I put a pink bow on mine. So she shared. She had extra. She didn't need seven masks, so she gave me her extras, just like in the Bible. Isn't that great? We can share just like Barnabas shared. And he didn't do it because someone forced him to or, um, you know, he thought everybody would think he was great. He just, God put it on his heart. God had changed his heart. He knew that Jesus was going to meet all of his needs and had given him extra so that Jesus would meet other people's needs by his extra. And that is so wonderful. And um, our Bible verse reminds us of Barnabas' actions. Our Bible verse says, share with God's people who are in need. And that's found in Romans chapter 12, verse 13. So imagine how the people who didn't know Jesus and didn't love Jesus thought when they saw God's family having everything they need. When they didn't see people hoarding their things, but they saw people giving their things. And everybody in God's family had what they needed. How do you think the people who weren't part of God's family felt about that? What do you think they were thinking? I think they were thinking, I want to be part of God's family. And then when the apostles could tell them about Jesus, their hearts were open to hearing about the good news that Jesus died for their sins and rose again and that he has conquered sin and death and that um, he is the king of everything then maybe they would see that's why these people are so willing to share because they know Jesus is the king of everything and so it opened their hearts to hear God's word and God's church God's family kept growing and growing our Bible story is found in the Bible in the book of Acts chapter 4 verses 32 through 37, just a short story. Now, if you are in elementary school and you know how to read, you need to read the next story because you hear about some people who tried to do what Barnabas did, but their heart wasn't right. And so you'll hear about what happened then if you read ahead. But God knows our heart 
and he knows that he can change our heart. We don't share because we have to. We share because Jesus gives us a heart to share. Jesus can transform our hearts, and that is good news. Let's pray and thank God for that. Dear Jesus, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you have shown how you can change our heart to want to share, to want to give extra, to give our extras away, to not hoard. Thank you for the example of Barnabas in the Bible. Help us to trust you that you will meet all of our needs and help us to be generous and give away those things that we don't need. In Jesus' name, amen. So as you can see on the poster, as we look at our Bible verse, there are some things, some objects around the poster. Now, these are things we can share if we have extra. Like I told you, some people shared some extra money with me. They had some extra and they shared some extra money. Some people might have extra food. They could share their food. Maybe you have an extra sweatshirt and you know someone who doesn't have a sweatshirt. You could share your clothing. I even had someone deliver flowers at my door. They had some flowers and they delivered flowers to my door. That brightened my day. And you might have some extra toys that you have grown out of, but you might know someone who has a little brother or sister that they would enjoy those toys. You don't need to hoard those. You can share that joy. So we're gonna say the words of the verse and in between every time we say the words of the verse, I want you to shout out to me something you could give away. All right, you think you can do that? So here we go, let's read it together. Share with God's people who are in need. What can you share? A pickle, you can share a pickle. Romans 12, 13, okay, we're gonna do it again. Think of something to share. Share with God's people who are in need. Plato, Romans 12, 13. All right, one more time. Let me hear it. Share with God's people who are in need. Money, Romans 12, 13. Did you think of some good things to share? It is so good that God meets all of our needs and then we don't have to worry. We can be generous and give to others who are in need. Now, we're gonna play a game and we're gonna use some of the objects from our game. Now. In my bowl, this is a bowl I got from Thailand, I have some of those objects. I have some antibacterial spray, I have a black mask, I have a beautiful bowl from Central Asia, I have an avocado, an orange, and some money. Now we're gonna have a garage sale, and over in my garage sale, we're gonna hide an object, one of these objects and you're gonna get an opportunity to use your eyes to find the object from our story in the garage sale. Do you think you can do that? Let's give it a try. Find the bowl. Find the avocado. Find the money. Find the orange. Find the hand sanitizer. Find the face mask. It has been so good to talk about sharing and about how God uses our generosity to show his love to others. I have just had such a great time today. And you know, here at Harvest, we want to be able to meet your needs as part of God's family. So if you have something that you need, or maybe you have an abundance that you'd like to share with someone in need, you can contact us at the church at office 
at harvestventura.org. And we would love to make sure the extra that you have gets to people who need it, or if you have a need, the extra someone else has gets to you. So uh, don't forget to go talk to your mom and ask your mom how she would like you to show her how much you love her on this very special Mother's Day. So let's say a prayer to end our time. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that you meet all of our needs. Thank you so much for your great love for us. Thank you so much for the moms you've given us who teach us so many wonderful things about you. Help us to be generous and share. Help us to remember how much you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hope we get to see you again next week. Have a great week. Jesus loves me this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Let's hold on to him be long. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me that.